Now, a word about animals on the Mark Thompson Show. And the person who comes through regularly to update us on the animal kingdom is Karen Dawn. She of Dawn Watch. You can find Dawn Watch on Facebook. You can also Google Dawn Watch, and you'll be able to find it as well. And, of course, it's dawnwatch.com. But uh, I thought of you yesterday because I was reading the Sunday paper, and I saw a column from Nicholas Kristof, I think it was, and he was talking about how we love and adore our dogs. And uh, he was just talking about the reverence and the fun and the sort of magical relationship we have with these dogs. And yet a whole bunch of other animals who have exactly the same emotional set. They're able to connect with us. And even uh, in the case of, for example, pigs, they're intellectually more uh, developed. They're able to actually develop uh, a relationship that are even more sophisticated with you. Not that that should be a life-death uh, proposition, but just to speak to how those are evolved creatures. And yet we treat them just like things. We eat them and we, you know, essentially... Uh, throw them away. He was even more honestly graphic than I was right then in that description. But I thought of you, Karen Dawn, because I feel like uh, underpinning a lot of what you do is sort of that understanding that we need to treat uh, all animals the way we treat our dogs. You know what I love so much about that column is something I try to do. You know, I had a, a book out which was called um, Thanking the Monkey, Rethinking the Way We Treat Animals. And one of the main things I do is just try to get people to think about these things a little bit. And I don't tell people what they should do, what kind of choices they should be making. But, you know, Dawn Watch encourages activists to encourage the media to do a better job of covering animal issues so that can people can make informed choices in line with their own values. And so that people can think about these issues. And that's exactly what Christoph's column yesterday asked people to do is say, hey, can we just start thinking about this a little bit more cogently, a little bit with less hypocrisy? He used the word hypocrisy. Um, as And thank you, uh, Albert, for sharing that. I actually I hope you guys can put it um, in the comments or um, when we when you launch the video. I um, provided a guest link to that um, column in the New York Times. Um, anything by Nicholas, Nicholas Christoph is, of course, worth reading. And uh, I heard you uh, refer to Tom Hanks as a national treasure before, which was fun. Well, if one is an animal person or any kind of truly thoughtful human being, I'd say Nicholas Christoph is a national treasure. So it's my joy to share yesterday's um column with your folks. I'm sure a lot of people um, who listen to you read him as well. And that column was just so beautiful. And I shared a couple of lines from it. You mentioned that um, he was more graphic than you were in talking about what we do to pigs. And part of it ties in so beautifully to um, what uh, we discussed a month ago when um, there was still talk about whether or not Biden was going to be the candidate. And I mentioned that one of the things that had hurt me so badly to do with his um, term in office was his um, administration's support of the pork industry against California when California people voted to ban um, a practice which is just so horrendous. And I, I described it as keeping these pigs in coffin-sized crates. And in his piece, he uses the same terminology that breeding sows, breeding female pigs, are kept in these crates for pretty much their entire lives where they can't turn around. They can't um, stretch out. You can't lie down with their legs outstretched. All they can do is um, kind of bite on the bars and go crazy. And he even mentions in this column that a um, when a pig is first put in one of these crates, she struggles and she's upset. And within a couple of years, you can just do anything to her, pinch her, splash water on her. She doesn't respond. It's just complete, utter depression, catatonia. And um, he mentioned this, that this is the sort of thing that we do to pigs. And yet at the same time, we adore our dogs. We honor our dogs. And uh, if Albert doesn't mind sharing, I put um, a quote up because some of a couple of his lines are um, so worth. I, 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 Albert, tell me if you don't have it, but I attached it to what I sent over. And if you don't have it, we won't. I won't uh, worry about it. We can just. He's talk probably about scrambling it. for it now. Um, 
He's got it. There you go. There it is. Mark, do you want to read it or do I want to read it? Uh, you can I've read it because I, I haven't. Uh, do you need me to read it? I will, but um, no, no, hmm. no. I can, I can put on my, put on my, my subtle Your credibility glasses. glasses? Here, go and, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he, there are just so many beautiful lines through this whole thing. But what I wanted to share was, just as today we wonder how people like Thomas Jefferson could have been so morally obtuse as to own and abuse slaves. Our own descendants will look back at us and puzzle over how 21st century humans could have tolerated factory farming and the systematic abuse of intelligent mammals, including hogs. And um, to read, to see that in the New York Times, not coming from an animal rights person. I mean, Christoph does mention in that piece that he doesn't eat farmed animals anymore, but um, Dawn Watch and animal people have been following Christoph for well over a decade now when he was very much still eating animals but saying look he was really against factory farming and um a lot of there were animal people who were very upset that he could continue to eat pigs and chickens and folks like that when he knew that they had personalities i always loved him because i thought as he wrote about this stuff as he thought about this stuff he was bringing his massive audience along with him and sure. Nobody likes to have the, the finger wagged and, and exactly. he's great. I, let me, not to interrupt you, but just the one line in there that was, you know, I think pertains to what you're talking about as well. I'm, I'm skipping over some of the uh, the one line that's a little uh, explicit. But uh, this is the quote from Nicholas Kristof. Someone mistreats a dog and we'll call 911. But if a company tortures millions of hogs as a business model, we dine on its products, invest in its shares and honor its executives. These are the moral contradictions we live with. And I think we tolerate them only because we don't reflect on them. So let's reflect, is what he says. Amen. Yeah. And that's, as I said, my the subtitle of my book was Rethinking the Way We Treat Animals. And it starts with the thinking. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Kim got in touch today and she said she wasn't sure who was going to be doing the show because everybody was sick with COVID. That's true. And I know that you and I, already look at this stuff the same way and you made the choice just to, when you found out what was happening to animals to stop eating them whereas i think kim still does eat them and i love her and i think and it's far more useful to talk to somebody who doesn't think your way so as much as i love talking with you about this i was super interested in what kim's you know thoughts upon reading that column would be and whether things like that do make people think and do wonder huh maybe is you know shall i look at the alternatives to the bacon when you find out what pigs go through on factory farms and the fact that they are just as intelligent and and thoughtful or more so than the dogs we love so much so well kim told me she's going the other way which is actually She's going to start eating dogs. Isn't that what you said, Kim? Yeah, that's, that's my thought, next uh, move. That's right. how, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. still on the reflecting stage, Kim. Yeah, she said it's just, it's just too hard to get off of the meat. So she's actually just going to be fair now and start eating dogs. In, in, and would she, and yeah. she probably might know me well enough to know it doesn't make any difference to me. I thought it was so funny with that Kennedy thing. And I don't want to talk about it, the rest of his politics with you, but there was that Vanity Fair hit piece on RFK. Yeah, he, uh, and they he said hit, that he ate a dog. And it turns out now, of course, the media has done a much lower job of covering the correction. It wasn't a dog. It was a goat. And a lot of this, you know, you'll find stuff on the Internet where he's saying it was a goat and it showed him feeding other animals to his dogs. And it's such a strange thing to animal people that um, that that's better, you know, and it's like and of course, we understand that to most of the American public, that's a huge difference whether you're eating a dog or a goat and i love that nicholas Kristof is asking intelligent thoughtful people in the new york times to think about well why why does that make a difference um and i, I this leads us into another story i just wanted to bring up today it's so closely connected and this was from yesterday's um news items also though not the new york times this came out of out of uh, the uk um a, a pet pig was killed for a hunting competition and um this adorable being's name was eddie and uh actually well I, I just said it was the uk but i'm realizing now no it wasn't it was um it was in the us and there's a photo of eddie and um there's a, a competition a wild hog 
hunting competition and um, the hogs are killed and they have to be video killed being shot. One of the reasons being apparently, and I respect this to make sure that they weren't tortured. And um, then they get taken and weighed and um, whoever brings in the biggest wild hog gets a $1,000 um, prize money. And um, this woman who owned this sanctuary uh, woke up one morning to find Eddie missing and couldn't find him anywhere and then saw that the fence had been cut. And then uh, when she put something out saying, where's Eddie, she got um, video sent to her of his, he had been killed for this competition. The hunters who ran the competition um, realized something was terribly wrong when the, generally the, the largest hog who comes in is about 150 pounds. And these boys had brought in this 250 pound hog. And then they noticed that the hog had been neutered, you know, so something wasn't right here. These guys weren't the brightest that they thought they were going to get away with this. Not the brightest and not the kindest. And um, so this beloved hog, Eddie, has been, um, was killed for this hunting competition. And there will be consequences. It is against the law to kill an animal that, that who somebody else owns um, without their permission. Um but and I, you know, so, my, so, so just to put a, a, a point on it, you're saying uh, there is much hue and cry about the fact that Eddie was killed because Eddie was a domestic animal, domestic pig. But if Eddie had pet. not grown up behind the fence of the house and been a domestic pig, it would have been perfectly fine to kill Eddie in that competition. That's part of what I'm saying. But I, I am saying that. You know, not, not that it would have been perfectly fine, but why do think it, people think it would have been perfectly fine? But I, I also want to know that my own people to know that my own instinct on hearing about Eddie in particular being killed was just outrage and heartbreak and the same as anybody else's. So immense compassion for the human who loved Eddie so much and wanting her to be able to get retribution. My instinct was I wish she could just go out and shot the men, sh shoot the men who shot Eddie. I mean, she loved a lot. And people who love their dogs dearly, I think some of, some of them will understand that instinct. I mean, if somebody tries to hurt Winky Smalls, they're, they're in big trouble. So I do get that, that idea that Eddie matters more than other pigs because he was loved by this human. But I just want us to all think about these things that if a bunch of wild dogs are being hunted in the United States, that's considered horrible. But if it's a bunch of wild pigs, it's fine. But if it's Eddie, it's not fine. And then if it's coyotes, well, it's fine for some people think it's fine, but others don't think it's fine. And I just love Nicholas Kristoff for raising these issues and saying, can we think about this a little bit more? Can we come to some sort of moral, um, ethical ideas about what makes killing one animal fine and one animal not fine and eating one animal fine and not the other? And can we acknowledge that all of these beings are intelligent and sentient and they matter? And I always say, and I've said it so many times on on your show, Mark, and uh, I um, that if we could only get laws that reflected how most people feel about animals, then we'd be going a long way. We wouldn't have factory farming. We wouldn't have um, pigs kept in coffin-sized crates because most people don't want that. So I'd like the well, laws- we can't get laws to reflect the way most people feel about any number of things from handguns to uh, public education to, I mean, uh, to women's reproductive rights. So you can, I mean, animal rights people can take their place online there because, I mean, on the long queue, waiting to have the reflections of the public actually go into legislative law. There is, <coughs> excuse me. Kim, help me. That was the Hi. great big <laughs> goddess in the car, in the sky was just choking you on the, you know, talking about other things that, yes, if they matter as much as animals Poor do. Mark. No, nah, it's a little bit of a little COVID rearing its head here. Uh, yeah. Mm, I hear you. All right. What it is. Um, I have one, sorry, go the ahead. The point you're making about, um, you know, saying that, yes, we wish the laws reflected um, how pe people felt about any number of things. Absolutely true. And that's, you know, and you talked earlier about money and politics and, and how that, that affects all of this. I do think when it comes to animals, the difference in how the laws are compared to how most people feel is 
even greater. I mean, I think I've mentioned before, they've got websites saying, does the dog die because people can't bear to watch a show where an animal is hurt. And yet we have this whole society built on the craziest amount of cruelty to animals, such as keeping intelligent beings in crates for their entire lives. So the difference between what people want and what is allowed is even greater when it comes to animals, I think. Than in, on before, we, uh, before we wrap up, I was just going to uh, respond to Mark Perrin, who says, uh, I hate to break it to you guys. By the way, whenever I see a, a communication of any kind that starts with, I hate to break it to you, I know the guy's being an a-hole, okay? Just being straight up. I mean, you don't start a comment with, I hate to break it to you guys, unless you're about to be a, 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 a jerk. So, I, and I'm sure you're not a jerk, Mark, but that's just a jerky way to start a comment. <laughs> so he says, I hate to break it to you guys, but if you were dead and a dog or a cat were starving, they would eat you. And a lot of times they wouldn't wait till you're dead. Uh, dude, if I'm dead and they're starving, they can have at it, okay? I don't know what that's supposed to prove, that they're carnivores and we're, I, I don't, I get it. Or you're trying to say, all I would say to you is we have the developed brain not to torture these things for our food, okay? They are straight up carnivores working on instinct. But I, I find your comment a little bit on the insulting uh, side, but I also think it's provocative and I respect your, uh, and I don't mind a little insulting, by the way. Uh, I feel like that's sort of what we have to be okay with. But I just want you to know, that's kind of a non-starter, what you said. If if I was dead and they were starving, they would eat me. Great, good. Then at least it's staying in the food cycle, whatever, you know. Uh, but anyway, Mark, tell I just, your comment. You, uh, you, you, know, you know I like the provocative comments. And, um, you know, I appreciate what you said about the way he started that comment because, you know, it's not – if you start with something as demeaning as I hate to break it to you guys, which is just demeaning, it's as if we don't know um, – you know, it's not a way to win people over to your way of thinking. And certainly when I'm advising animal advocates how to talk, it's not like that. But I appreciate, I love that he raises this because it just reminds me that, you know, Mark, you and I don't eat animals, um, but that's not what we're here telling people don't eat animals. Um, we are talking and Nicholas Kristoff isn't saying, how can people eat pigs? He's talking about the way that they are treated before they are killed and um, the dog and cat who would eat us if we were dead are not keeping us in crates for entire lives so that they can kill us and eat us. It's not the same thing at all. Yeah, and, very, you know, that's very well put. Yeah. I, uh, as far as eating somebody once they're dead, you know, I never had a problem with that alive. No, drag my here. body out and whoever, anybody who wants a chunk can is welcome to it. Uh, apparently, I'd Mark eat, is- I'd uh, eat him if you were dead, so. <laughs> I'm really good with some hot sauce. Sandy says, Mark Perrin is a troll. He's the one we call the cackler. Well, I have no problem with uh, the cackler or him being uh, trollish. I really don't. But uh, we just had to respond. Uh, I'm out of time for you, Karen Dawn. I love you. And I love the, you know, the light that you point towards some of these issues. They tend to be provocative, but I think there's nothing wrong with that. You can find more and an ongoing kind of record of the way animal stories are being handled worldwide at dawnwatch.com again dawnwatch is all one word dawnwatch.com and her facebook page there's really a lot of action on that so go to facebook and you can find dawnwatch there karen always appreciate you thank you appreciate you being here you too that's a uh, word about animals for today join the flock again next time for a word about animals on the mark thompson show Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.